hunting. The harmonic, primal and ancient dance of nature that predates all extant life on Earth. Hunters are often majestic in form and cunning in the mind. We are hunters. Our ancestors started by scavenging the scraps left behind by predators that ruled the world for millions of years. But that soon changed. At some point in time, we began to hunt, partaking in the ancient dance, and we did it well. We hunted animals far larger in size and stature, leading to hundreds and thousands of years of domination. Today, we have become so powerful that we can hunt virtually any animal on Earth. We are now at the point, with the emergence of agriculture, that we no longer must hunt to feed our families. But are we missing something? Something that all life on Earth is a part of? Perhaps the loss of hunting in our life has disconnected us from the real world and changed our perspective on reality. Hunting helped us humans to create bonds, to problem solve, and to thrive. Join me today on Ancient Yoke as we look at the history of this ancient dance and attempt to find out just where it all started, as well as how it changed our genus for the years to come. Enjoy. We have many characteristics that set us apart from our closest living relatives, from our ability to run long distances to our oversized brains. But they may have arisen, at least in part, as adaptations to hunting. The reason we evolved to hunt is unclear, but anthropologists seem to suggest that it was due to the climate changing, and across Africa, the forests and woodlands where our forebearers had long foraged for fruit and leaves were giving way to more open grasslands where such foods were harder to come by. We had to adapt or simply die. Numerous changes to the DNA of our hominin ancestors made them formidable predators on the savannah, where saber-toothed cats and other large-bodied carnivores had long reigned supreme. To this day, we humans with our bipedal form of locomotion are slow sprinters compared with quadrupeds. We excel at long distance running. No other living primate even comes close to this level of running ability. Daniel Lieberman of Harvard University and Dennis Bramble of the University of Utah have proposed that this capability evolved to help hominins hunt, allowing them to pursue their prey until it slowed or collapsed from exhaustion. Judging from the traits that are preserved in the fossil record, such as enlarged hind limbs and short toes, Endurance running originated in Homo by around 2 million years ago. This helped us partake in something called persistence hunting. I'm not going to go into any detail, so if you want to know more about persistence hunting, then watch my video on Homo erectus. I'll leave the link here. Our ancestors also underwent some psychological changes. With higher activity levels compared with those of their predecessors, hominins needed a new way to avoid overheating. As Nina Jablonski of Pennsylvania State University has theorized, the loss of fur and the gain of special glands in the skin that promote sweating helped our ancestors to keep cool while in hot pursuit. Jablonski estimates that this evolutionary trait was well underway by the time of Homo erectus, and this fact just baffles me. Humans can actually outrun a horse in a marathon. But outrunning prey isn't enough. As I mentioned earlier, us humans are not blessed with any sort of physical strength or canines to deliver the final blow. So once the prey is exhausted, how did we kill it safely? A heavy or sharp object was probably thrown from a safe distance. At Kathupan, there are potential stone spear points that were made by Homo erectus. The reason they have been proposed as spear points is because when studied under a microscope, these stone points exhibit the same patterns of damage as other confirmed spear points. I think by the very least we can assume that Homo erectus used wooden spears. They were very intelligent. Even chimpanzees have been observed making very basic wooden spears in the wild to hunt bush babies. So to say Homo erectus could make a spear a little more advanced isn't at all out of the realms of possibility. 
We have to remember that only a fraction of the creations of these hominins has been preserved, so who knows what technology has potentially been lost. Even with a spear in hand, was Homo erectus even able to throw it? Modern humans shine at throwing, with speed and accuracy. Chimpanzees, in contrast, perform this task dismally. Recently, Neil T. Roach of George Washington University and his colleagues set out to determine why humans are so much better at throwing than chimps. The key to our throwing skills, it turns out, lies in the elastic energy in our shoulder muscles. Studying college baseball players, Roach and his co-workers identified three features present in modern humans, but not in chimps, that greatly enhance our upper body's range of motion and thus its ability to store and release this energy. A flexible waist, a less twisted upper arm bone, and a shoulder socket that faces out to the side rather than upward, as it does in apes. Turning to the fossil record, Roach's team was able to identify when these throwing traits evolved. The longer waist and straighter upper arm bone appeared early on, in Australopithecus. But the shift in shoulder socket orientation appeared roughly 2 million years ago in Homo erectus. This trait may have evolved to throw stones at potential predators. It is very difficult to establish with certainty that natural selection favoured any given trait for a particular purpose, such as endurance running or throwing spears as a means to hunt. In some cases, selection might have initially promoted the trait for a different reason altogether, only to subsequently see it co-opted for another activity. Our tall waist, for example, seems to have originated as part of a package of traits that facilitated upright walking, but later with the addition of other, complementary features, it took on a new role, helping our ancestors hurl an object at a target with great force. Roach suspects that selection for throwing was driving the shoulder changes that emerged around 2 million years ago. He thinks so in part because those changes were making our ancestors worse at another important activity, which had long provided hominins with food and a haven from ground-dwelling predators. When you give up going into trees easily, you need to be getting something else. A better throwing arm would have given us improved access to animal foods rich in calories, while allowing hominins to drive off predators that try to attack them or steal their kill. So we know that we were physically adapted and had the technology to hunt at the start of the Homo line, but when is the oldest evidence of hunting and butchering? To answer that question, scientists must find clear traces of hunting in the archaeological record, which is no easy task. Stone tools and cut marked bones show that early humans started butchering animals by 2.6 million years ago. But did our ancestors hunt the kill? Or did they just steal the prey from another rival predator? For decades, experts have debated whether early Homo hunted or scavenged. The earliest concrete evidence of hunting is in the form of wooden spears and animal remains from the German site of Schöningen, which is just over 400,000 years old. But over the past few years, compelling evidence of much earlier hunting has emerged from studies of large assemblages of butchered animal remains from sites in East Africa that date to the time of early Homo. A site in Tanzania by the name of FLK Zinj may hold some answers. 1.8 million years ago, hominins transported carcass after carcass of wildebeest and other large mammals to the site to carve up and eat. British paleoanthropologist Mary Leakey excavated most of the bones in the 1960s, and scholars have been arguing ever since about whether the animals there were hunted or scavenged. Henry T. Bunn of the University of Wisconsin was thinking about the problem of distinguishing hunted animals from scavenged ones when it dawned on him that the tactic should leave different signatures in what is called metality profile of the bones. For instance, when it comes to hunting large game, such as waterbuck, lions tend to pick off the older individuals. So, if early humans were scavenging kills by lions or other large carnivores at FLK, the assemblages should show a similar overrepresentation of old individuals, 
Instead, Bunn and his colleagues found the butchered large mammal remains at the site skew much more heavily to individuals in their prime than to old or juvenile animals. Exhibiting the pattern, one would expect to see if humans were selecting the animals they wanted to kill. In fact, the pattern at the site closely resembles that of prey hunted nowadays by the Hadza hunter-gatherers in Tanzania and the San in Botswana using bows and arrows. As far as we know, Homo had yet to invent long-range projectile weapons such as the bow and arrow, but Bun thinks that the hominins may have engaged in ambush hunting by hiding near the trees near the water source and launching wooden spears at unsuspecting animals at close range as they pass below to drink. Many hunting tactics have been proposed throughout the ages, from persistence hunting to stampeding mammoths off cliffs. It's likely that humans varied their tactics based off which animal they were hunting and the environment around them. Even older traces of hunting have come from Western Kenya at a site called Kanjira South, where Joseph Ferrero of Baylor University and Thomas W. Plummer of Queens College unearthed thousands of stone tools and animal bones that were stripped of their flesh and marrow. Most of the bones, which date to two million years ago, come from small, young antelopes and show little carnivore damage, which supports the idea that hominins hunted the prey rather than scavenged. Plummer says that the antelopes were small enough that if large carnivores had killed them, they would have completely consumed the carcass rather than leaving any tissue behind. The team at the site are certain that these finds are the oldest concrete evidence of hunting yet to be found. The hominins at the site were eating meat on a regular basis. In fact, based on the number of carcasses and bones found, it was the main bulk of their diet. Analysis of the tools from the site show that they were processing plants, including tubers, which would have been included in their diet. It is hard to pinpoint the impact of Homo shift to a meaty diet. Trends evident in the fossil and archaeological records indicate that it established a feedback loop in which excess calorie-packed food fueled brain growth, which led to the invention of technologies that permitted our ancestors to obtain even more meat, as well as high-quality plant foods, which in turn powered further expansion. As a result, between 2 million and 200,000 years ago, Brain size swelled from roughly 600 cubic centimetres on average in the earliest representations of Homo to around 1,300 cubic centimetres in Homo sapiens. Hunting also would have radically changed the social dynamic among our ancestors, particularly once they began hunting larger prey that could be shared among other members of the group. Travis Pickering of the University of Wisconsin explains that this development ultimately led to greater social organisation in early Homo, including a diversion of labour whereby men hunted large game and women gathered plant foods, and both groups returned to a central meeting place which evolved into a home at the end of the day to eat. And although today for some it might sound like an outdated arrangement, dividing up of the responsibilities between the sexes proved to be a remarkably successful hominin adaptation. Pickering further suspects that the shift towards meat-eating fostered self-control in our forebearers. Although conventional wisdom will point towards the fact that hunting promoted aggression in humans, a view based on observations of chimps hunting aggressively, he believes it cultivated level-headedness. Unlike chimps, which have brute strength and lethal teeth, early humans could not merely overpower their prey with an aggressive attack. Instead, Pickering argues they gained emotional control and acquired prey using brains, not brawn. In his view, the advent of tools that enabled hominins to kill from a distance helped them decouple aggressive emotions from hunting. This would have helped humans in many near-death situations to remain level-headed and logical, as well as perhaps reduce violent outbursts among tribe members. Support for this hypothesis comes from Lower State University primatologist Jill Prutz's studies of an unusual population of grassland-dwelling chimpanzees in Senegal. Unlike their forest-dwelling counterparts, which hunt large, dangerous monkeys with their bare hands, the Senegalese chimps mostly target tiny nocturnal primates known as bush babies, using sharpened sticks that they jab into the tree hollows where the tiny primates sleep during the day. 
Pickering notes that the Senegalese chimps go about their hunting in a far more subdued manner than the forest chimps, which subject their prey to frenzied beatings. Perhaps the spears used by these chimps help them keep their cool. Our ability to colonise distant lands and thrive under wholly new ecological conditions helped our genus become the most successful predator the world has ever known.